Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about what an Omni executable is. Um, I may have made up the term, but I'm pretty sure someone else has also called it that. I don't know. Uh, we're going to talk about what one of those things is, uh, show you a very popular example, and then show you how to write one of your own if you happen to need to do this for whatever reason. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so when I think of the word omni-executable, I'm thinking about a single binary that responds to a bunch of different commands and acts completely differently. Um, but it's exactly the same binary. binary. So I'm not talking about like subcommands. I'm talking about specifically one executable that does a bunch of different things. And the most popular example that I know of is a thing called BusyBox. Now what BusyBox is, is a single binary that ships and you can symlink or hard link to that one binary a bunch of different names and it will act differently based on those. And just to show you what I mean, if we look in the bin directory in this BusyBox Docker image, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of files in here or a whole bunch of executables in here. They all have exactly the same size and date, and they all have this link count of 400, except for this one. I don't know why this one's different, but <laughs> that we'll, we'll assume that one's special. Um, but all of these executables are actually exactly identical. And if we, do we have SHA-256 sum, we do. Uh, you'll see if we SHA-256 sum all of these, they all have exactly the same, um, you know, checksum. And the way that these things work is when the program starts up, they look at the executable that got run and then change their behavior based on that executable name. So even if we call, you know, unique, uh, let's see, unique is uh, one of the commands that I spoke about on, does this support link strings? It does, okay, cool. So if we foo foo bar and pass that to unique, you'll see that it, it acts properly, even though it's a different executable or it's the same executable as all these other ones. And, you know, it is not the same as Unix to DOS, um, but you know, even though it's an identical executable, you get different behaviors out of it. And we can actually show how this works by making our own symlinks. Um, so if we did ln dash s uh, bin, I don't know, any of these, bin vi to unique, and then we run this, but instead we do dot slash unique, uh, it's still going to act as unique even though we were using the vi executable. Kind of weird, but also pretty cool. So let's talk about how you would write one of these yourself. Um, and I'm going to write mine in Python, but you could do this in basically any programming language. And so up a Python script. And the way this is going to work is it's going to inspect sys.argv0. Sys.argv0 is the name of the program itself. And you know, through symlink or hardlink magic, we can actually make it refer to something else. So we're going to user bin and Python 3 and make a small executable here. Oh, you get the keyboard cam for this stream or for this video. Oops, I forgot to turn it off from the last one. Oh, well. Usually that's only for Twitch. Um, but yeah, we're gonna import the sys module and just to get started, we're gonna print sys.argv0 just to show the command or the arguments that are getting passed in here. And of course, since it's return int, we gotta return zero. And we're going to make that executable. And if we run t.py, you'll see that it just spits out t.py. Now, if we were to make a symlink from t.py to, let's say, I don't know, unique, um, and now we run dot slash unique, you'll see that this program is able to detect which executable we're running from. And so maybe in the case of unique, let's implement a bad version of unique, I guess. Uh, import os.path. Uh, so exe equals os.path.base name this.argv0. So this is going to allow us to retrieve the executable name. And if exe is equal to unique, we'll just, um, how do I get an ordered set? I guess I can use ordered dictionary. Yeah. Scene equals this for line in sys.standard in. If line, uh, we can do scene. 
do this. It's uh, kind of <laughs> we're using a dictionary as a set, but we're specifically using a dictionary because it's ordered by by its keys. And then we can do for line and scene, grand line and turn zero. So that's our implementation of unique. Otherwise, we can say that you know there is nothing implemented for that particular executable and raise an error there. And so now if we do foo foo bar and pipe that into our unique, you can see that we have a functioning unique executable. Now, if we instead call dot t dot pi, you'll see that we get non-implemented error. And that's because you know we didn't actually implement the behavior for any of the other executables. Um, but this is kind of what's happening at the low level in BusyBox. There's a special little startup script that says, what am I? Who called me? And then figures out which functionality to use from there. Now, I recently implemented one of these for work uh, as a sort of wrapper script. It's complicated, but I, I needed something that acted similar to this, where I could just symlink to a binary, and then it would you know, imbue some other behavior and run an actual piece of code in the code base. And um, this is kind of the basics for how you get started with this, but it presents a few problems. Uh, the first problem is if something symlinks to this symlink, uh, so let's say we did ln-s-s, uh, you know, unique2. And so now if we look at our symlinks here, we have unique that points at t.py and unique2 that points at unique, and you know, unique points at t.py points at t.py. Um, so now if we were to run, you know, this still works, but if we run unique2, we actually get a different problem here. We notice that this uh, unique2 is not implemented here, even though, you know, as, as an outside viewer, we should just be able to symlink to any of these special binaries, and they should act as their normal special binaries. Now, fortunately, you can kind of use a little trick here. So the executable that we're looking for is actually the last symlink to t.py. So what we can do is kind of traverse from this symlink to this link, symlink and see that this symlink is a, a symlink to here and then be done with that. And so the way I did this at work is a little bit of a loop. Uh, read link. Uh, but I did implement a little read link helper. So there is os.readlink, but if you import os, os .read link, let's say if we read link, uh, unique to, you'll see that it returns back unique, which doesn't necessarily help us know where that binary lives, especially if we do uh, temp explains unique to, it's not going to tell us where this actually lives. So we have to do a little bit of path manipulation to get to the right results. Um, <clears throat> so we can do os.read link path and then we do return os.path.join its dir name of path and the thing that we read out of the link oh, slightly off screen uh, well there's a close parenthesis here that's all you're missing <laughs> um, and then we can say ex equals this while um, os.path.is link ex and not or while it's a link and stuff path that is link read link exe oh that's super off screen the problem with the uh, programming on this the screen and not the other one or this terminal and not the other one um, so basically we're doing a little while loop here where uh, while the executable is a symlink and the next level is a symlink. We're just going to do exe equals os dot, uh, equals read link exe, and then we can do the same exe equals os dot path dot base name sys dot argv zero, and do this here. So basically, what we're doing is we're traversing the symlink until we get to a place where we're at the last link. So now unique two should also work implemented this improperly so we will debug it a little bit uh <laughs> right can't debug it because there's no standard in uh let's step path that is link exe true let's step path that is link read link exe that's also true and read link davis dot slash unique 
Okay. Oh. And then I ignored all of that computation that I did and just did sys.xv, uh, sys.argv0 there. Okay, so now it should work. Um, after we get rid of our breakpoint there. Cool, so now unique2, even though it is a symlink to this secondary symlink, it still acts as if this is the last one. So it allows it allows it to work as basically any normal executable at that point. Um, but yeah, hopefully this is cool. Uh, maybe it'll solve some problem that you wanted to solve with some wrapper executable or whatever you need to do. Um, but I, I thought this was cool enough to share, so I made a video about it. Anyway, if there are any other things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.